Welcome back to the Accounting Cycle Practice Set. This is part two for the practice set part A. So this is the second video for practice set part A. All right, so let's go back to our instructions. And here's our instructions. We did part one, which is using the chart of accounts, open the, open the accounts in the general ledger. So we did number two, which is record the journal entries for the August transactions. So now we have three steps left. And the next one is to post the entries into the general ledger. And when we post our entries to the general ledger, use J1 to indicate the general journal page one in the reference column. Okay. So let's go to our worksheet and here is our transaction. So what we're going to need to do is to take each of these transactions and we're going to need to post them to the general ledger. So our first transaction is on August 1st and it's a debit to cash for $3,000. So I'm going to click on my general ledger tab and it's August 1. We really don't put anything in the description. In our reference, we talk about where this information is coming from. Well, it's coming from General Journal, page 1, which in the instructions it said to abbreviate that as J1. And we received $3,000 in cash, so that was a debit. And our balance is $3,000. Okay. I calculate my balance as we go along. One of the steps says to calculate the balance. I just like to do it as I go along. For me, it's easier. Okay, so next we are on um, G. Spencer Capital. And so we're going to credit that account, Capital. So we're going to do August 1. Once again, we don't really put anything in the description. And we're going to credit $3,000 to that account. And now my balance is $3,000. OK. So now what we have to do is we have to post that back to the general journal and say, OK, we have posted these. So how do we know we posted them? We put the account number in this reference field. So in this particular case, cash is 101. And G. Spencer Capital is 301. So now when I look at this page, I can tell that the first transaction's been posted because I've got my references. All right, so let's post the second transaction, and that's rent expense. Okay, so we're going to debit our rent expense account. So here we are, August 5th. It's coming from G1. And our debit to that account is $225, so that makes that's our balance. So let's go back. Let's go back here. And that's account number 501. So that indicates that it was posted. And we have we have to post the credit to cash. So if I go back to general ledger, see how it's account 501. Okay, so we have to go to cash and post the other half of the transaction. So that was on the 5th. Came from G1. It was $225. And now when I calculate my balance, I have $2,775 left in my checking account. Started with $3,000. I spent $225. Leaves me with $2,775. Okay. So let's go and back to our journal and let's put account 101 in the correct place to indicate that that part's been posted. So now when we look, we can see that both transactions one and two have been posted. So let's move on to the 15th. We're going to debit cash for 3,250. And that is the 15th, J1. And we deposited 3250 so that increases our balance. And that gives us a balance of $6,025. OK, that's account 101.
let's post that back to 101. Next, we have our service revenue. We're crediting our service revenue for 3,250. So we need to find service revenue. Here we go. And that is August 15th. It's coming from J1. And we're crediting that because we're increasing our revenue. And so we have a balance now of 3,250. It's account 401. Let's go back. And there you are. Okay, let's move to our next transaction. On the 16th, we had wage expense, which is a debit to wage expense for $200. Okay, so we have August 16th, J1 is our transaction, I mean, is where our transaction is coming from. Wage expense of $200 gives me a balance of 200 This is account 502, so I'm going to go back here and I'm going to post that to account 502. Next is cash. I have to credit cash for $200. So we go back up to our cash account. It's a 16th. It's also coming from J1. We spent $200. So that gives me a balance of $5,825. That's account 101. I need to go back and post that. All right, we only have two transactions left to post. So on the 22nd, we purchased supplies of $75. So we're going to find our supplies account. It is an asset. That's going to be August 22nd. J1 and that's $75 and now my balance is $75. That's account 103 so let's go back to account 103. Okay, second half of the transaction is we're going to credit accounts payable by $75 so let's find accounts payable. J1 so we're going to credit that $75 and our balance is $75. It's account 201, so let's go back and record that. And next is G. Spencer Drawing, $800 on the debit side, so let's find the drawing account. That's um, August 31, coming from J1. It's a debit for $800. This is account 302, so we're going to post that to account 302. And then the second half of that transaction is to cash. It's $800, so let's go back to the general ledger. Go back to cash. On the 31st, J1, we have a debit of $800 because, no, I'm sorry, credit of $800 because we reduced our cash um, balance and that's five thousand twenty five dollars. This is account 101. 101. Okay, excellent. All the transactions have been posted so let's go back to our instructions. And it says here post the entries to the general ledger and use J1 did that. You can check that off our list. Calculate the balance in the general ledger accounts. Check that off the list. We did it as we're going along. Now we have to prepare the unadjusted trial balance in the worksheet by adding all the columns, all the accounts from the general ledger. Make sure you properly complete the heading. Okay, so let's go to the worksheet and we're going to click on the tab that says worksheet on it. Here's what it looks like. So let's start with our heading. The first line for any report is the name of the company. So we, this is Gloria's Cleaning Service. It is a worksheet and it's for it's as of August 31, 2020 and that's the end of the month. Okay, so in this part we are only going to do the unadjusted trial balance. So we're going to list all the account names then we're going to bring over the balances from the general ledger, make sure that our debits equal our credits and if you remember, 
the check figure said $6,325. That's what these needed to agree to. So we're just going to take all the accounts from the chart of accounts and we're going to put them in there in this order. So let's go ahead and do that. So our first account is cash. Our second account is accounts receivable. Our third account is supplies. Fourth account is accounts payable. Um, next is wages payable. Next is G Spencer Capital. Next is G Spencer drawing. Next is service revenue. Next is rent expense. Wages expense. And supplies expense. Perfect. So now we've got all the account names all set up. We're ready to begin um, transferring the balances from the general ledger. Okay, so we start with our cash. So I'm going to look at a couple of these. And so we've got cash, accounts receivable, and supplies. These are my assets. Cash has a $5,025 balance. Accounts receivable is zero. And supplies is $75. So we're going to do $5,025 zero and seventy five dollars excellent let's go back to our GL so these balances have been transferred so now we're gonna go to accounts payable has a balance of seventy five dollars now remember that's a credit balance because the normal balance of a liability is a credit and you can see here we made a credit to that account wages payable has zero so let's go back to our worksheet so Accounts payable is $75 and wages payable is zero. Okay, let's go back to our general ledger and let's look at our equity accounts. We have two equity accounts, the first of which is her capital. We have a credit balance of $3,000. We can tell because we um, the normal balance for a capital account is a credit. And if I look, I only have credit. And the drawing account has a debit balance of 800. So let's go ahead and put those balances in. $3,000 on the credit side for capital and 800 on the debit for the drawing account. All right, so let's go back and look at our revenue. So we'll do revenue and rent expense. Revenue has a normal balance of a credit. You can also see that it's a credit balance, 3,250 and rent expense has a debit of 225. So credit 3250 and rent expense of 225. As you can see there's formulas in there and it's adding as we go along. Okay excellent so we're down to just um, wage expense we don't have a balance for supplies and we don't put income summary on our trial balance. So $200 debit for wage expense. Excellent and zero for supplies. And if you recall from the instructions it said, let's look at that, it said here that the um, check figure for the unadjusted trial balance each column should be $6,225 and ours bingo $6,000 three hundred and twenty five dollars they agree we have now completed practice set part a for Gloria's cleaning service